What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to talk about three, four, four things? Yes, synchronous operations, asynchronous operations, multi-threading and multi-processing. I hope I nail all of them. If you're interested, stay tuned. So the first one guys, synchronous operations. Synchronicity is when you make a request, whether this is a network call or a request to read from desk, or a request to send to a printer to print. Does anybody print these days? I don't think so, right? But yeah, if you're doing that, then there is this magic thing that we call the process. And there's in this process, there's always, by default, one thread that does the work. That actually does the actual work. Now think about it, guys. If you're calculating a prime number, then you, that thread is just busy in the CPU, right? This is using the resource of the CPU to calculate things. Ah, oh, one plus one, no, 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 minus then divided by three. Is that how you calculate a prime number? All right, so now it's busy. But think about it. If you're reading from disk, you ask, your thread is asking the operating system to read a file from disk. The thread is not doing actually any work. It's basically blocked and waiting. That's it. It's just waiting. So if you're reading, then who who is doing the actual work from reading the disk? That's the disk controller. It's called I.O. controller. It's it's something on the motherboard that I forgot how it actually works. It's just some driver on the motherboard. Maybe the operating system is responsible for that. So the thread here is just sitting here like that. It's just, yeah, all right, I'm just waiting here. Not doing nothing. So the rest of your code, guess what? It's also blocked. And that's called synchronous execution because you're sending a request and you're waiting and blocked despite you not doing any work, really. It's just blocked. So that's synchronous execution. Same thing applies to sending a REST request to the, uh, to the, uh, to the server, right? You're not doing any work. The server is doing the work. You're just waiting for a result. Right, the TCP this file descriptor is waiting for something to wake it up and uh, receive the information. Well, until that, you also block. So if there are code here, you cannot execute that code, unfortunately. If there is a UI thread, thread no. If you if there is a user experience or UI and pe the user is actually pressing, assuming you are single threaded, that button doesn't do anything. You cannot do anything because that thread cannot leave that state to actually go and serve and animate the button as if it was clicked because guess what it's blocked assuming again single thread right most application has a ui thread and, and them but let's assume just for simplicity if you're writing a visual basic 5 application like 1998 kind of a things right but yeah one application is blocked right now People say, this is ridiculous. We cannot do this. This is dumb. How about we introduce some other thread? Let the, let the process execute another thread that does more work. That sounds cool. So what is a thread? A thread is, we have the process. Think of it as like a container. That's a wrong word. But <laughs> think of it like almost like a container that has one thread of execution all the time, right? If you as the process owner or writer of the application can spin up another thread to do some other work. Another thread can do some other work. All these threads have in common is they share the same resources that the process has. That is big, 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 big problem because they gonna start racing for these memory locations. And you can get into the same situation that you get with a database, which is locking and, and race conditions and all that jazz, right? So what do you do, guys? What do you do, right? You don't do multi-threading because multi-threading is evil, right? Check out this white paper that people just say, stay away from multi-threading. So people say, okay, some people st stayed away from multi-threading because they cannot get it right because it's very hard to build your application so it's a thread safe, right? That's what it's called. Thread safety is essentially having mutexes on your resources so no two threads can actually access the same process resources at the same time. 
What's the problem? Right? That's the that's the big problem, right? So people shied away from multi-threading. Some people liked it, it's still a thing. Some people are still doing it, and they are bragging that their application is thread self. Definitely SQLite per the whoever or SQLite does not like multi-threading. Check out, check that out. He, he despises it. So yeah, so multi-threading is essentially evil. That's my personal opinion. You might have different. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, but essentially, multi-threading is yeah. It's very hard to write. It's very very difficult to get right. You need to have a very very skillful understanding of how operating system works and see your CPU, because your CPU can have multi-cores and your threads can execute in parallel, literally in parallel, not time sliced, in parallel. I, that's, that's good, but doesn't give you much, inform, much uh, benefit, to be honest. Some smart people came in and says, you know what? We're gonna execute something called asynchronous execution. And Node.js is a very elegant example of this. It's a single threaded, non-blocking asynchronous framework that's that's the title of this so let's talk about asynchronous cities right i cannot spell guys and i cannot talk apparently all right asynchronous cities asynchronous city is the idea of having a single threaded single process single thread that does the work the process cannot do work by itself well it needs a thread, but well, that is also based on the operating system. Linux treat threads as a subprocess versus Windows actually just three threads as an actual thread of thing, which which kind of complicate things. But never mind. Back to the point. Single thread, single process. If you're reading from desk, we're gonna do it asynchronously. Here's what we're gonna do because the thread doesn't literally is not doing anything. It's just waiting and it's being blocked and the rest of the code cannot be executed. It's blocked here, right? And the rest of the code cannot get executed, right? So what do we do? What do we do, guys? And I'm sending a request to the IO controller to read it from disk. And I'm sending a request, a fetch command, for example, JavaScript, and I'm reading from network resources, REST endpoint, gRPC, right? And I'm waiting. I'm just, just sitting here waiting, doing nothing, right? The application knows this, and it was just say, oh, okay, this thread is not really doing anything. So what we're gonna do is let's send that request that is essentially uh, uh, the request that is actually uh, was blocking. And here's what I'm gonna do: we're gonna tell whoever owns that other end, I/O controller or the network, says, hey. Here's a request. I want to read this resource. I want to read this REST endpoint. I want to read this block of disk. And here's the thing. I'm going to go away. And here's a function. It's called a callback. Call me back. All right? Whenever you're done. I'm going to do my own thing here. So the, the thread immediately unblock and start executing other codes until that function finishes right the, that actual reading is done and the reader will call back that function which will trigger some sort of an event which the thread oh there's something here let me go and execute it this is in javascript the implementation is that literally an event loop the thread goes is okay do i have uh, jobs to execute do i have actual code that i need to execute is there something coming from a callback is there something going on? yeah so that's how we work asynchronously beautiful beautiful design one slight problem and I don't know if you if you coded in callbacks in Ajax back in the 2000-ish, 2004, 2003. That's when I started coding with Ajax. The code is ugly as F. You cannot read it. Because most of the time when you go a callback, you need some information from the callback to do something else. So you start doing, okay, callback, and then you say, okay, this function, and then you take this function, and then all right let me go do this other thing and then that thing needs a callback so you end up doing a curly braces and then curly braces and curly braces and curly braces and curly braces curly braces and it's completely unreadable right so people when they invented this meanwhile some people didn't like it the multi-threaded people says eh that's just ugly code like multi-threaded is a beautiful code huh <laughs> right but some people deferred from this because it's just ugliness the JavaScript community came in and says, you know what? 
we'll fix this. We still like asynchronous, but we're gonna bring promises. They brought promises in the picture and now the code is better eh. with a dot, then dot, then dot, then dot, then dot catch. Some people even did it even better. And now it's pretty much a standard, I think. Async await. You write the function you call, this is asynchronous function, and every call that is essentially blocking, you write an await on top of it. And that's it. It will act asynchronously, but look synchronous to you. And it's all sh sh syntactical sugar. Syntax sh Can you say syntactical sugar three times in a row? I dare you guys, you cannot. Syntactical sugar. I cannot. I think. Damn it. Okay. All right, go back. All right, so that's that's uh, asynchronous execution. That's my favorite thing in the world. I like my process to have single threaded, and I don't care about multi threaded. I'm going to use asynchronous execution. <sighs> All this mess of synchronousy, asynchronous, and multi threaded, some people said, F all that. We are multiprocessing guys. Multiprocessing, I'm also with those team. Multiprocessing, and I'm gonna define it the way I understand it. If if that doesn't make sense, let me know. Or if, he, if you disagree, let me know, because I would love to learn how do you perceive this. So multiprocessing, the idea of spin up, instead of spinning up threads in a single process, which share the same resource of the process, Right? What the heck is that? Okay. So instead of spinning up multiple threads in a process, spin up just unique processes with their own beautiful memory structure, with their own resource, with their own everything. And then what do you do? You just communicate between them. Use inter-process communication. Uh, you can use a centralized Redis database. And uh, yeah, there are many ways to communicate between processes. You can use sockets between them. I know it's a little bit an overkill, but you can list, literally listen on a server here, localhost, 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 and ports, and communicate with ports. And all the communication will happen with TCPs, right? Mm, that's fine. It's all localhost anyway, who cares? You can do that, people do this. Absolutely fine, right? There are some limitations. But here's one example where multiprocess is actually good. Let's say you want to write a function that brute force a password. Bad example, I know. But you want to write it so that multi-threaded application, multi-processes, and asynchronous, right? The best way to write it, in my opinion, is use a multi-processor. Because multi-process can be spin up on multiple, not just just the same machine. Could be scaled to run on multiple uh, machines as well, right? And I believe this is... Essentially how containers work, if you, in a nutshell. They're more isolated than a process, but sure. But here's a, here's a good problem. I want to, this is a hash, right? MD5 hash. And I want to know, I want to reverse it, which is an almost an impossible problem. Well, impossible. It is a very hard problem to solve. So what do you do? Well, you basically come up with garbage strings and try to hash it and see if they match it. And that string matches, the hash of this string matches the hash that you were given. That means that's an input is a candidate input, right? Well, one machine can just take a string and then just like loop through, uh, take a dictionary, a rainbow table and just loop through all of them and then generally start generating the hash. That's absolutely fine. But here's the thing you can have multiple processes, throw multiple processes at the problem. And you say, okay, you process one, take this rainbow table. You process two, take this dictionary from A to M. And this process take from N to Z, right? And so on. You can start splitting the problem in multiple processes. So you're multi-processing, right? And if you're kind of hip, right? And it's like, yeah, if you're hip, you can use a reverse proxy, send that problem to a reverse proxy and let the reverse proxy actually divide the problem. You can write logic in the reverse proxy. I believe HA proxy and Nginx allow you to write some, uh, Nginx at least, uh, allow you to write lower code to actually split. Hey, uh, you, your, this server, spin up 
a container or multiple containers and they'll ugh, throw some problems at it. It's like between this and this, and you server between this and this, and you between this and this. And so you're kind of multi-processing between them. Hadoop kind of works the same way as well. But yeah, so that's essentially multi-processing. That's in the, w the way I see it. Might be wrong, but that was like a brief uh, discussion between synchronous, asynchronous, multi-threading, and multi-processing, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Keep up those good, good questions coming, guys. I love them so much. Gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay safe out there.